Hey everybody, welcome back to Jamia's promo. Today I'm gonna to show you nine steps you're able to take if you want to extend the battery life of your Samsung Galaxy device. Now I may say that there is nine things that you're able to do, but that is like the maximum things and you don't have to do all of them. Actually, in terms of the Galaxy Z Flip 3 and the Fold 3, I noticed that there was only really two or three of them that you would want to do to extend the battery life to actually make it last quite a long time and more longer than most people have been stating. So, I mean, I've been able to usually go 12 to 14 hours throughout the whole entire day, either having, you know, three and a half hours of screen on time. I was able to go all the way up to six hours of screen on time. Right over here, you can see that this one has been off of the charger for over 11 hours. I have a screen on time of one hour and 48 minutes, so almost two hours already, and I'm still way above. I'm above 75%, so I'm at 76%. And there's a lot of things that I was doing with this one, setting up different services, the Galaxy Buds playing with the camera you know soon I'll be using more and more of streaming services Spotify YouTube music watching YouTube itself and it's still gonna get me through the day all the way up until I got to go to bed which is somewhere around 11 o'clock at night so again I may be going over nine different things the last two which is number eight and number nine is the most drastic you'd be able to do everything up leading on top of that is just gonna add more and more and more time really it just depends if you want to make these changes or not maybe there's only two three or four you want to do or maybe you want to do about seven or eight of them now before we go into all these tips if this is something you guys are interested in and if at any point you do notice that this thing has helped you out maybe you've learned something new make sure you guys hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications to get notified for all future videos and again if you learn something new if you find it to be beneficial give it a big thumbs up also write a comment below the video of what one of these was your favorite or what now you have just learned because I think that this video here is going to be able to benefit fit and help so many people out there make their battery lives a lot longer really no matter which Samsung phone you have but if you have the Z Flip 3 the Fold 3 some people complain the batteries are not that great but here's the thing I am home all day on my phone all day and I can make it last until 11 p.m. so obviously people are doing something wrong now some of these changes you might not like but then some of the times it's really no big deal. Now, the first one that I changed that made a pretty big deal, and I think Samsung probably needs to push a update for this so it can kind of patch this, is that when you go inside of the settings and when you go down inside of display, inside of display, you can see that my motion smoothness, I have to have it as standard. Now, when I had it as adaptive and it was doing 120 hertz, it was really draining the battery. Now, some of the other phones, it didn't really do that. Uh, but I was noticing a really big battery drain when adaptive was turned on. After I turned off uh, adaptive and I went over to standard, I was noticing my battery life was going quite a bit better. So this might be one of those that you might be wondering and stating, well, I want the Z Flip 3 because the Flip 2 did not have adaptive on it. And it's really nice to have 120 hertz. But again, I hope Samsung can push off maybe a software update to fix the battery drain of motion smoothness on 120 hertz. So since we're still inside of display, we just changed motion smoothness over into standard. One of the other things you'd be able to do to save battery is going to be the always on display. And again, works with really any Samsung phone. If you want to save more battery, just turn off always on display uh, because sometimes you had it as an option of only on or always show. So some of the other things you'd be able to do is you can show as scheduled. So maybe through some portions of the day you want it to be shown. Uh, but for me, I do tap to show. So this way, anytime that I want to take a look at something, I'm going to be probably in arm's reach of my phone just to see what time it is or if there was notifications. So if you have tap to show turned on, you just tap the screen once and it's going to pop up that always on display. Now, if you tap it again, then it's probably just going to turn on the, the screen itself. But again, tap to show is really quick just to see, you know, what is on your phone in terms of time as well as notifications. Now, the next one I want to talk about will be with the fingerprint. And what I did with this, my edge panel, was I actually had to put my edge panel area right where the power button is so it can remind me where that power button is because it's a little bit higher than what I would want it to. And so now I know exactly where that fingerprint is located just by looking at the screen. But one of the things that you might want to do to save some of that battery is, is unlocking your phone. So when you go down inside of your, your uh, biometrics and security, now inside of here, you want to go inside of fingerprints and you want to type in your pin. 
Now, once you go inside of the settings for fingerprints, you can see that I have my right thumb set up, which is probably the only one that you're going to use since it's on the right hand side and it's not on the screen. The other one is right here is that fingerprint always on. If you have the fingerprint always on, that means it's always ready to go to read your fingerprint. Maybe you might have an accidental touch with your palm. So what I did was I just simply turned it off. Now, one of the drawbacks of turning this off is that, you know, it used to be nice where you just pick up your phone and you tap on the little, you know, the power button to get it unlocked. Uh, you just kind of set your finger on it and it doesn't lock. One of the ways you can do it now is just by double pressing. When you have the screen on, then you just put your thumb on the fingerprint reader. Or what you can do is actually just press on the power to turn on the screen and it reads the fingerprint at the exact same time. So if you're looking for a way to get into your phone, uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but if you wanna get into your phone uh, and also read your fingerprint at the same time, you'd be able to do that. If not, you'd be able to double tap on the screen, put your fingerprint there, and then it's going to unlock your phone. Now. It might be beneficial to keep that fingerprint on if you always are one of those type of people, but I got used to the fact that I have to have my screen turn on first or I press the power button to turn it on and it reads my fingerprint anyways. And then this way it's going to unlock the phone. So that was the two massive ones that I've done was turning off that 120 hertz, turning off the always reading a fingerprint. And really when you do those two things, for me personally, it's made a pretty big massive difference. Now adding in that tap of the always on display, that one will also help because in this way you don't have a screen always illuminated all day, giving you notifications or, or showing you the time that you don't really need. Now another setting that you can change to save a little bit of battery will be the location services inside of applications applications, meaning if you have a bunch of applications that are always picking up your location, it's basically updating the application all the time, even when you don't need it to. All you have to do is go inside settings, go down to where it says location. Inside of location, just go to app permissions. And so now you're inside of the app permissions of a bunch of location-based apps. Now down over here, you can see a lot of them that have been denied. Here is ask every time. So maybe if you tap on your camera, uh, you can choose these three options, allow only while using the app ask every time or deny. So for example, these ones on the top allow all the time. I'm just gonna keep those ones up over there. Those look like services that would probably need to have location all the time. Uh, and then when it comes down, let's say allowed only while in use. So for Facebook, you'd be able to go through here. You can put it up there where it can allow it all the time, where you can check in at any point in time. You can take a look at different locations around you when you open up Facebook. Uh, if you are at a baseball game or football game and you want to upload a photo and tag where you are, things like that uh, or you can make it ask every time you can also even deny it so maybe for location services we're going to ask every time we'll put it down over there uh, for maps uh, allowed only while in use obviously that's something that you would probably want to have for allow only in use for camera you can either have it ask every time you can even go to deny so it doesn't have your location when you take when you take photos. Now, if you're somebody that's in like the repo business or somebody who is in like insurance business where you have to take photos of things and also has to have um, location tags, you might want to have that one higher up. But for me, I'm not in those businesses. I don't need my location to be known inside of the camera. So really, you can kind of go through some of these. You can bring most of them to denied if you want to, and that's going to help you save just a little bit of battery. Now, the next thing you want to take a look at is if you're finding your battery to drain, you know, more than it should. One of the things you can do is go inside of your settings then you're going to scroll down and you're going to take a look over inside of your accounts now inside of accounts you want to go inside of manage accounts and then with this screen here you'd be able to take a look at some of your more in, importantly your google accounts so some of these other ones are not going to have big issues when it comes down to syncing so for example uh, let's say that we take a look over inside of this gmail right here that i don't really use that much for anything that's really needed so inside of here underneath the sync of account here's the gmail that i don't really use much you can only see that there's a couple things that i have turned on which is gmail drive and contacts turned off the people details google tv calendar because then these things are never going to sync. So if you have multiple Gmails on your phone and a couple of them you don't ever use on a normal daily basis for whatever reasons, you can turn off some of these things to where it's not going to take up some of your battery. But when you notice that there's like a red circle thing where it's like kind of like an issue it's, it's failed trying to sync something it might always trying to be syncing and as it's always trying to be syncing that is what is draining your battery so if you see a red circular thing that looks like this uh, if you see a red thing then you're going to want to make sure that you turn it off 
because then that just means you probably have a sync error. And it might even say sync error over here. And if you have a sync error, it's gonna retry, 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 and it is running in the background all day, which is probably another reason why your Google Play services percentage is so high on your battery information uh, that it's trying to sync. So I would suggest when you go through your Gmails, turn off uh, especially the ones in those Gmails you don't really use, turn off the things that you don't really need. More than likely, you probably need your Gmail and maybe possibly contacts. Now, the next thing you'd be able to turn on is one that is called adaptive battery. So some of these next things is just going to be going strictly over inside of that, those battery settings. So when you go inside of the settings, you're going to scroll down where it says battery and device care. Then you want to go inside of battery. Now inside of battery, you can scroll down and you can take a look at like more battery settings. And this is where you have adaptive battery. So it limits the battery usage for applications that you don't use often. So if there's things that you don't really use often, you might as well save a little bit of battery. So you can turn this one on right here. Um, now, as you go through here, you can also turn on this one here. I haven't really played with it. I've been doing pretty good by putting it up to 100%. I always charge it at uh, you know the time that I'm about to go to bed. And I always unplug before I pass out. I don't charge my phone through the night. It's just one of those things that I've never done for many years, ever since the Galaxy S3. And my battery life has been doing very, very well, You know, even if I've had it for several years. Now that you're still inside of the screen for battery, the other thing that you can turn on is gonna be the uh, background usage limits. So now this might be on right away. And all it's gonna do is any applications that are unused for quite some time, it'll just put them to sleep. You can see which applications are sleeping, deep sleeping, or you can even put some of them underneath the never sleeping apps, but that's kind of the opposite of what we're doing in today's video. Now, the next thing that will also be really good to use on your phone is going to be if you were to change the adaptive power setting. Now, adaptive power setting is one that I like to use. Uh, you know, instead of me going through battery and turning on power saving mode, I like to go inside of device care. On the very top right hand side, you go to automation. And then this is where you can go to adaptive power saving. So it turns power saving mode on and off automatically based on your usage patterns. So you can save uh, power when it's not needed. Now, this is what I would use, um, you know, before the last resort. So this is what you would do if you want to save battery when the phone knows that you're not using it hardcore, you're not playing games, you're not doing really anything crazy, you're just looking at Facebook or Twitter, whatever the small cases, just turn this one on. This automation thing, it's actually pretty nice and it turns on and off automatically for you and it extends the battery life of your phone. So we've gone through so many different small changes you can do. You can change your 120 hertz to standard refresh, the always on display, just turn it for the tap. You, you've changed some of the location app permissions for some applications. You turned on maybe adaptive battery, you you change your background usage, usage limits. The fingerprint is not always on. It's only gonna work when the screen is on. You also have the Google sync error if you have any problems there. And then this very last one that we just got done talking about, which is underneath automation for adaptive power saving. Now, if you find that you need to have more battery and it's not going up to your standard, uh, the last case scenario is going into power saving mode. So when you go into power saving mode, you can go through, you can have this thing switched on, simply just turn it on. You can even turn it on through your quick settings on the top. Now, when you have it on, there's a couple of these that you can actually turn off if you do, if you want. So if you don't want it to decrease the battery by 10%, you can see how it's gonna make a difference. So from here, just by de decreasing the, the screen brightness by 10%, it's gonna save you three hours um, in terms of whatever it's stating right here uh, for the power saving mode. Then you also have limit CPU by 70%. This one's also gonna save you by three hours. So if you turn both of these off, you're all the way down to a day. You're at uh, you know two hour, there's that extra five hour there, total of these two you know combined. Turn off always on display. This will also save you just a little bit. So if you had all of these turned off, you're down all the way to 22 hours. Uh, and then if you turn them on, it can get you extended to one day, five hours. Now, once you turn this on, it's gonna do all of these things. Now, if you even wanna go even further, Here's that maximum power saving mode. It's basically easy mode from way back in the day. It limits basically everything. This is the last, 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 last resort. Uh, more people probably won't use this at all, but if you do need to extend the battery life, you have like three hours till you get home, you have almost no battery and you don't wanna turn your phone off, this is your little option. But if you wanna make your phone last all day with regular usage, you'd be able to turn on power saving mode. You can switch any of these off. Or what you'd be able to do is make any of those changes 
right before this last resort, all the things that I just listed from before, and you'll be able to have a really good battery life. So you can also take a look at the top of this phone. You can look at the time, you can look at the, the power. Uh, the screen has been on this entire time, going through the settings, things like that. I've actually been recording this. You don't know about this for about 21 minutes. I always edit this thing down uh, and it barely dropped by any percentage points. So this is a way that you'd be able to save a lot of battery on your phone if you wanted to change some things. Uh, again, the big massive ones was the whole, you know, never always on fingerprint, changing the 120 hertz down to standard, and then a few of those other ones, and then you'd be able to have a really good battery life going on in your phone here uh, that should last you the full entire day. But I hope you guys have appreciated this video. If you guys did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Subscribe right over here on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.